guys welcome back to my channel don't worry uh, we're on a heat mat so she's nice and cozy and warm um, but I'm gonna get into the questions right now because I have quite a few and yeah I don't want it to be too long so the first question is when is his her hatch day um, birthday it is actually May 18 the second question is is she he a male or female I do not know the gender yet. I will be doing a DNA test. Um, I personally do not really trust the physical cues that some people prefer. I think if you're a very good um, experienced breeder, you could easily tell. But for someone like me, um, you know, it's just, I just trust the DNA test. It's just 100% accurate. That's the reason why. So yeah. Um, the third question is, how old is uh, she, he now? Um, at the very moment, uh, she is, or he, three weeks and three days old. Uh, the fourth question is, what mutation is she? Um, I asked the breather this. We know it's a cinnamon, but, you know, there's different cinnamon mutations. We are thinking that it's going to be a cinnamon pearl. The fifth question is, do you feed her at night? No. There is a reason why I do not do that. Um, so yeah, there's a health reason. So I do not feed um, at three weeks old, at least for cockatiels at this stage. Night feedings are not necessary. If anything, it is advised that you do not do it. The sixth question is, have you decided on a name yet? No, um, we are still deciding. I say we because we're going to pick together and at the very end um he she will pick his her own name so yeah i'll show you guys what that will look like but i think it would be a cute interesting video it is pretty much the same thing i did with muffin if you guys have been following me for some time muffin picked her own name so yeah it's kind of interesting um i'm gonna do the same with this little guy the seventh question is who do you plan on keeping her with i know a lot of people are wondering that it's going to be muffin um, I know some people thought I would keep her with Kiwi, Edward, and Blossom. No, I'm going to be keeping this little one with Muffin. I know a lot of you guys are going to have questions regarding that, but let me just answer that one question that people are probably really, really wondering. No, we're not going to keep her in Muffin's cage. We will be getting a new cage. So hopefully that answer at least another question that you guys might be having. The eighth question is, how often does she sleep? Quite often, actually. She'll probably doze off soon. So, yeah. The ninth question is, how much did you pay for her? Um, <laughs> $200. Um, yes. The tenth question is, what is it like having another baby cockatiel? I wouldn't say stressful, but I think everything that's happening right now, um, is a bit stressful but this really doesn't have much to do with my baby cockatiel I think when people started watching my videos a lot of people were kind of DMing me and yeah that's I'm just gonna be honest it has been stressful and even when I tell people hey go to a vet it kind of goes from one ear to the next and people fail to realize that one I'm not an exotic vet and two it's not my responsibility. I try really hard to get to everyone, but imagine how stressful that is on my mental health because now I'm trying to make sure all your birds really make it for the night. And personally, I just kind of feel like that's unfair. I mean, it's like I said, it's not my responsibility, but I'm trying my best. But I just feel like some people are unfair and they're not really deserving of birds so yeah hope I, I hope not to hurt anyone's feelings with that but at the moment that's honestly how i feel the 11th question is is there something cute funny or quirky she he does she actually this is why i put this little um paper i was gonna say paper cloth just a regular cloth because she actually um likes putting her head on it sometimes i have a video um showing you guys how she does it i'll probably have it uploaded in two days or so it's kind of funny and very cute but yeah so the 12th question is where did you get him her from wait for it i got it from a breeder but hold on buckle up i have another confession to make 
I got um, muffin and this little guy from the same breeder. Now I know that for some people is already alarm flags going off, but relax. Um, I think because muffin is visually compromised, people just assume the breeder is this horrendous, horrendous breeder. He probably doesn't care for his birds and doesn't provide vet care. He's just horrible. And no, that's not that's that's very not accurate. He cares a lot about his birds. He provides the vet care. He provides very healthy veggies, and he actually has them on pellets and doesn't even use seeds. So this breeder is very good and I know going with that a lot of people are going to ask then why did he even sell you an unweaned bird? I actually asked him for it. When I got Muffin he actually didn't sell me an unweaned bird. He wanted proof that I actually have done it before and he made it very clear that he doesn't sell unweaned birds. I provided pictures showing that hey I've done this before. I'm quite capable of doing it again and that is how he trusted me and obviously he knows I got muffin so obviously he's gonna trust me with the third baby. I just wanted to add that because some people just assume that every breeder out there is horrible. They're not. Um, this breeder just happened to be very kind enough to give me an exception and obviously he doesn't do this for other people. He knows that I go to a vet I care for my birds this isn't gonna be with every breeder um, he trusted me well enough and um, I'm grateful for that but I just want to add that there because I don't want people to think that my breeder is just this horrible person he is not um, you know what else could I add to that if I'm defending a breeder there must be some truth to that right I'm not gonna just come here defend someone's um, you know honor someone's values if i didn't believe in that so yeah the 13th question is why do you like to hand feed the babies yourself instead of getting them when they're already weaned i just happened to get the first clutch and um there wasn't any adults at the time so i'm just like i'll just do the process myself because i already am familiar with it this also happened with muffin i could have easily waited until they are old enough but you know what um i was just like hey I'm comfortable getting them um, and weaning them myself. So the 14th question is why did you decide to take a baby cockatiel and not a rescue? I'm also going to take you guys a little back because I think it explains um, the story a bit better. I got Blossom unintentionally because she wasn't actually supposed to be a baby. Um, and I think if you scroll back all the way back in my Instagram post you would see. I actually waited around six months before I ended up with Blossom. Uh, I replied to a lot of um, ads that did have cockatiels at the time, but they never returned back to me. And I actually even made fake emails, so I was like, maybe they don't like me or something. So I made fake emails, which sounds horrible. I was agreeing to the price. It wasn't like I was um, making a discounted price or something, no. And with the fake emails, I actually put a higher price point, but they never returned to me. And I'm like, I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, I didn't end up with a rescue bird. With Muffin, um, it was pretty much the same thing. The only thing is with Muffin's breeder, um, he wanted proof. With Blossom, uh, it was an accidental clutch. With Muffin, he breeds... Oh, what happened, baby? With, <laughs> with Muffin, it was um, a breeder. And the breeder doesn't sell on wean babies. I just happen to get one. So, yeah, if you have been watching up until now, you kind of already know the answer as to why I did that. Um, with this little guy, I didn't wait as long, to be honest, because I was, at this point, kind of familiar with how Kijiji works. I think I waited only, like, two months, three months. Um, and then I reached out to the breeder. The breeder just put out a nest box and I waited another a couple weeks and then I needed to wait a bit more, you know, obviously until uh, this guy was a bit more, or girl, was a bit more older because obviously I wasn't going to get a cockatiel that was a day old. That was a big no-no, but, you know, it actually took a couple of weeks before I even ended up with this guy. So the whole pro process took me four months or so, but yeah. The 15th question is, is it fine for a starter to get a baby cockatiel? Um, a baby cockatiel is fine if they are weaned. 
um, if they are not weaned, I do not suggest it. Chances are you're not very prepared for vet bills if something does go wrong. And a lot of the times, um, people just reach out to me and they already have a baby and they don't want to go to the vet. So that just puts a lot of strain on me because now I'm, I feel responsible. Um, and I shouldn't really have to feel responsible. It's your responsibility to take your bird to the vet if you are concerned about his health. But people just don't end up asking me. I try helping, but there are times where I give up and I say, Hey, you know, there's nothing I could do at this point. You need to take it to the vet. And some people still refuse. The 16th question is, until how many days should we hand feed them? That's really going to depend um, how fast they wean. Um, I would say on average some cockatiels could take up to two to three months. It really depends on the individual bird. Now because I have a single bird, it's it might take longer but I do plan on uh, you know having you know muffin and blossom kind of showing you know how the weaning process and stuff happens. Um, birds tend to copy their flock mates so hopefully it's quicker but if it's not uh, we're completely prepared for that. The 17th question is, what formula do you use? I use the exact formula. Uh, the 18th question is, can something go wrong if you hand feed um, a baby cockatiel? Um, let me list them. I could probably do an in-depth video, but I'm just going to list them right now. Aspiration could happen, which is pretty much them choking. They could get crop burn, so for that you need a thermometer. Um, it's completely avoidable. There's also something called sour crop. Uh, this could also happen. It's when the crop doesn't empty. There's various reasons as to why the crop is not emptying properly. But this is actually why I don't do night feedings at three weeks old. If they were younger, um, you know, you should do um, feedings. But again, I'm going for cockatiels. Um, I'm not going for other species. They could starve to death if you're underfeeding. Or if you're overfeeding, again, it could also have a stre stretched out crop and they could end up having a sour crop. I think many of the problems that happen with hand feeding is pretty much people that are not very experienced um, and they don't do enough research. Um, you might also not be using proper tools and also not disinfecting the tools properly. For instance, if you don't clean them properly, bacteria could build up. So yeah. Those are some stuff that could potentially go wrong. The 19th question is, when it's older, can you do a video about weaning him, her? Um, I can. I'll probably do something very simple. Um, also, a lot of people have been wondering um, the bin it stays in um, or if it's staying in a cage. At the moment, no, it's not staying in a cage. It won't be able to purge. Um, there's also something called weaning cage, um, which is a smaller cage that... Um, birds that are close to being weaned off and stuff stay in but if you guys want me to film the process I think I could do that for you guys. The last question which is the 20th question is, is the whole process stressful? Not stressful for me personally I wouldn't say it is stressful. It's, it's sleeping in such a weird position. Here you go. Um, I wouldn't say the whole process is stressful, but I will say I am on high alert, which for some people might be a good thing. For some people, it might be a bad uh, thing. In my case, I think it's a good thing, at least in this scenario, simply because that means that if I am concerned about the safety of the little guy, girl, if I am worried something is going wrong, I know my bets. I know I could provide vet care. Um, yeah, so... Being high alert, in a way, it, it protects the baby um, in many ways. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, I know many people want to get baby birds, but yeah. I think even in the YouTube community, um, some people have birds, but I think that personally, I would say less than 5% will have 5 grand in their bank for a single bird. And all I'm saying is that financially, I could provide very good care for all of my birds. I fit into that 5% where I am not struggling financially. YouTube is also not my 
main income i mean it's not even an income at that point it'd be ridiculous to call youtube an income but financially i am very secure again i'm not five i'm not 10 not 15 i'm not 20 i'm 25 so it would make sense that i have my own income and that i could provide for my birds and vet bills are not a concern for me at all so because of that um the whole process isn't necessarily stressful i think i'd be stressed if i knew i couldn't afford it which in the first place why would i get a bird but for me financially uh it's 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 not an issue which i think it means a lot because that would probably add a lot to my stress levels so this is the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed the video i tried making it quick but what these questions it never ends up being very quick um at least when i'm editing it, it it ends up being a very long video but i still hope that you guys enjoyed the video and i decided not to film myself but film my bird because i think a lot of you guys are interested in the bird not necessarily me so i hope you guys enjoyed the video until next time um bye bye guys